Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. In this video, I'm going to be going over the residential uh, zero turn John Deere Z335E. I've made some other videos. One video I was I made where the lawnmowers to avoid, and this was one of them. Um, I'm going to show you why I think this is a mower you should avoid. But if you've already bought one, don't worry. There's some simple ways to fix the issues that I'm going to cover here or things you can do to avoid some issues. So let's get started now. I'm going to show you uh, what I did on this one. It has only 14 hours on it, so it's relatively new, but it still came in with some very common issues. So I'm going to show you that now. So first, let's start off with the common issues that I see with this mower. And then at the end of the video, I'll offer some, uh, some tips and solutions. First, do not ever step on the deck, okay? Don't ever step on it. It will bend. They bend pretty easily. Um, I do like it how it has a low fuel light, but real quick, I'm gonna rev this up and let you guys hear the deck. I'm gonna lower it to the ground. So right now I can hear something's wrong, you know, either a spindle or idler. So I'm gonna take this foot plate off of here, it takes a 13 millimeter, or you can use the little wrench that comes with it for the deck height adjustment tool. And I'm gonna hop back on here and get a better idea of this sound. Now, when you're running the blades, it should just, you should overwhelmingly hear just the blades swishing in the air, you know, when all the spindles and idlers are good. So I'm gonna crank it back up here and I'm gonna let you guys see the belt and how everything's running and working. Uh, this is the point where I lower it down to the ground. I'm gonna hold the camera where you guys can see. It's definitely making some noise. There's either an idler or something. But another common issue before we get to the deck is these tires hardly ever hold air. They're always coming in uh, low on air pressure. And the other main thing is you notice there has there's some play because these uh, caster forks they have plastic bushings into that frame with no grease, no grease whatsoever. I don't know how they expect them to last. Like I said, this one only had 14 hours. I'm gonna pop it off and show you real quick. It takes a 15 millimeter on the top and there's just a washer on there. There's no type of seal or anything. Um, I'm right there, I'm kind of showing you the, the wiggle and the play because what happens is they get into a bind, especially when the tire's low and those bushings wear out and they just kind of get into a bind where they don't want to turn easily. And when I saw this one, I saw just a little bit of, this is the most grease I've ever seen on one, just a little bit of residue. And so I felt inside of here with my finger and realized, because a moment I thought they started putting grease in them, but they didn't. Um, I'm gonna show you right here, it's nice and dry. A little bit of sand in there. So that's not gonna help anything out. And that's a common issue. But I'm going to real quick before we we'll get back onto onto those in a moment. I'm going to show you this deck. Now, don't remove the belt that way. That's just the way I do it. That's not the way the proper way to do it. It's just the way I do it. But I'm going to be quiet here and I'm going to spin this spindle and let you hear it. I'll raise this cover up. Hear that noise? Let's check the other one. Now, you always wanna get the belt off of the sheave, off the pulley. This one feels pretty good, even though the sheave is kind of wobbling a little bit. Probably just a little bit of defect from the uh, manufacturer on the, on the sheave, not a big deal. One thing you want to do is take the blade and rock it, take the end of it and move it up and down. This one's okay, but I'm going to show you the other one. Now, 
when you're underneath here, one way I always check to see if the deck is not bent, I'll take the blades and match them up to see if they're cutting it. Hear that? Wobbling really bad, but I'm gonna match up the cutting edge on these blades to make sure the bent blades aren't bent or the deck isn't bent. So if you do, if these aren't matching up, you wanna put new blades on it and then if they stir, see how that one's fine? That one's knocking real bad, so I gotta replace that spindle. But if you put new blades on it and those blades are matching up uh, or still not matching up, then you know you have a, a bent deck. And real quick, I'm gonna check these idlers. I'm gonna pull this belt away. You should not be able to pull this belt out between that yellow guide right there. But that one's bent, but this idler does not sound good. And again, you shouldn't be able to pull that belt through there. It should not slip through there. So that thing's bent back. And this other one, I'm just gonna pull it off since it's, it, this is the tensioner idler. It's the same part as the other one. But a lot of times you can kind of feel of it with your finger, the bearings. So I'm gonna take it off and kind of spin it and see how those, um, see how the bearings feel. And this one ended up being fine. Felt really good, no issues, no noise, nothing. So this one felt really good. Now next up is this cover that's underneath the seat. This attracts a lot of grass and things of that nature. And what happens is in the fall and winter times in, in many parts of the country, Mice and rats love this. They love this to make this their home. Um, you'll see here, this little compartment here, a lot of times it's a lot more grass and when these mice get in there, they love to chew on the wiring and we see it all the time. It's a major problem. Now real quick, this is another unit, another mower, different mower. I'll show you same problem. It's a lot worse on this one. This one had about, uh, I think about 30 or 40 hours. So real quick, this is what I do. Um, I just remove them. And then what I do is I put new bushings in with, uh, I apply grease. You see how dry that is? This customer was complaining that the, the caster wheels would not turn. See how worn out that bushing is? I'm going to show you what a new one looks like. There's the part number. That's what a new one should look like. And here I'm going to show you uh, some that are side by side. New ones to the left, obviously. So what I'd like to do is just apply a lot of grease in the frame and to the um, fork, the, the spindle on the uh, caster fork. I put those new bushings in there and it will last a lot longer. And these will normally go in relatively easily. You can kind of use like a little rubber mallet. Or sometimes they just go in by hand. So just apply some grease and that will drastically help the situation. Now why they don't apply grease from the factory, I don't know. A relatively easy fix. These bushings, they're not very expensive. And check out my video uh, where I showed how to find parts on deer.com. I'll put a link in the description. I'll show you now that one feels nice and it turns good there's no play in it feels really good all right so as far as the front tires i don't know what the issue is they always seem to come in with low air maybe you can put some type of sealant inside of the tire i don't think a tube is the way to go they are tubeless tires but just you need to check that air pressure. I would recommend uh, putting it up. In that other video I made, I said it took 44 PSI. Well, it's actually 46 is the max, uh, but 
it seems to do better if you put it up at, at around 40 to 44 psi um, in my opinion but you want to make sure if you ever go to level the deck you want to make sure all your tires are uh, inflated properly now i showed you about the bushings um, those aren't very expensive you can put some grease in there and that will last a lot longer um, now the good thing uh, one good thing i do like about these mowers is uh, i did change the spindle and idler on this one at only 14 hours um, that's kind of rare on, on these mowers but you need to grease you need to grease them okay so this is the new one and I even put some grease in there and um, there is a rumor that these are sealed bearings inside of that housing and that rumor is true they are sealed bearings but the grease will still seep into those bearings even though that they are sealed bearings uh, the seals will kind of uh, allow some of the uh, grease to get in there, but you need to keep them greased. Um, on this particular model, on some models, the um, tensioner arm has a grease fitting on it, on like the 500, I think the 535s, this one does not. So you only have two grease fittings um, on this unit, you know, for the, each spindle. The bearings on here on the front, you, do, you can't grease them. Uh, they come, they're sealed bearings as well. Uh, the best thing about this mower is the engine. All right, um, I like the engine. It's easy to work on. As you can see, it's easy to get to the oil filter, fuel filter, spark plugs. Air, everything's easy. And these are probably the least problematic mowers. I love this, I mean, and the engine, I should say. Um, I love the, um, the Briggs & Stratton here. Uh, v twin 20 horsepower mower I mean engine they're really really good um, another thing you don't really often see um, you don't see the clutches going out on these too often um, the hydros eh, it's kind of iffy there now one thing I, as far as like preventive things like I mentioned about the the mice eat, you know getting in here and making a home um, just make sure when you go to store your mower you know, uh, do everything you can to keep mice away, you know, traps, whatever, light, you know, stuff like that, all kinds of different things. But I would recommend taking an air. I'm going to do that to this one also. Um, taking some air and blowing all this grass and just keep it as clean as possible. Um, and maybe there's some type of pellets or something, I don't know, or something you can put around in your garage or shop to keep the mice away. And the other thing is, like these come in, like I said, often with bent decks, people will cut too low and they'll hit stumps or, you know, hit the ground or whatever. And, or they'll step on the deck, like I mentioned before. Don't do that. These decks are not, um, they're not the sturdiest. So they'll be fine as long as you're just cutting residential yards. And I would recommend cutting it three inches or higher. And that's going to be better for your grass anyway um, these are not commercial units um, I know some guys will say hey I'm a commercial landscaper man you might be but these are not commercial grade mowers and oftentimes I will say this oftentimes I do see some comments where like hey my mower does great um, I'm just showing you guys what I see because these come in a lot and it's just the same issues uh, that I mentioned before um, so if you're if you have one of these mowers and it's doing great well you're obviously doing something right i'm just showing what is a common thing that i see since i work on these a lot of times so um if you have one mower you know guys you know with your that's basically anecdotal evidence i'm not saying um uh, these mowers won't do you right you just these are just the things that i'm showing that you need to look out for so I'm going to go ahead and finish up my test run of this one, and I hope you guys will like the video, subscribe, and I'll see, see you guys next time. Thanks for watching.